So last night we're eating dinner and my middle son says, Mom, are you a nun? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> First of all, <laughs> I just said, no, why would you say that? He said, because you worship God all the time and that's what nuns do. And I was like, but no, but yes. <laughs> Greetings, friends. Welcome to Snacks and Good Company. I'm your host, Sherry Lynn. This is a bonus episode, a live bonus episode. Maybe you didn't think we could do Snacks and Good Company live. Neither did I, but we did it. One night at a church, Evergreen Church in Bothell, Washington, a bunch of ladies came out and we had a ball doing Snacks and Good Company live in person together. It was a night of worship. It was a night of laughter. It was a night of encouragement. And we just had so much fun. So our friends, Sarah Taylor, Erica Parkinson, both from Spirit 105.3, uh, join us. Also, Jen Schultz from All Mom Does will join us as well. We'll have a panel discussion where the ladies from the audience actually could text in questions. And we answered some of those and talked about our relationship with God and how hard it is sometimes when we compare ourselves to each other and friendships and delighting in God and him delighting in us and just a bunch of topics that we talked about, a lot of laughter. And I started off with some quote unquote comedy. I get into the comedy, but before I start the quote unquote, I keep saying quote unquote because comedy is subjective. So I hate to call it comedy and you listen to it and be like, eh, that wasn't that funny. So it's attempts at comedy. But before I start that, I start with something that I was thinking about a couple nights before the night of the live episode. And I want to run it past all the women. And there were a lot of them in that auditorium or in that sanctuary that night. And uh, they were ready for it. Hope you are too. Well, well, well. Hello, friends. All right, so I got stuff to say. However, <clears throat> I can only say this. This isn't, this isn't comedy right now. I got comedy stuff. This is just in the sisterhood, all right? It's just us. You promise? Okay, it's just us. Because I, uh, I, uh, I don't think the men folk would like this. <laughs> So, <laughs> hurry up, brother, get out, get out. <laughs> run for your life. <laughs> run, Forrest, run. <laughs> this is, this is, I'm wrestling with it. Uh, it just, it, uh, it just came to me. It's not fully formed, but I feel like with the sisters, we can think about it, okay? Not last night, night before last, 2.42 a.m. I was eating. <laughs> a pizza. <laughs> Extra pepperoni. Sausage. And green peppers and spinach because vegetables are important. <laughs> and while I sat there and I ate, I said to myself, it came to me. And I don't want to say God brought it to me. It just came to me. I want to talk about it briefly with you all, then I'm going to get to the comedy. It came to me, guys. What if when God created Eve... She was 225 pounds. <laughs> I want y'all to think about that for a second. And I know you're like, well, no, Sherry, that's ridiculous because she would be overweight. How? She's the first one. 
What if she was just big and jiggling all over Eden, bounding around at 225? What if he just made us to be big? I'd like to unpack it just a little more for you quickly. I got comedy coming up, this ain't it. <laughs> By a show of hands, how many of you believe you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Would you raise your hand? Okay, that's gonna be our foundation, all right? By a show of hands, how many of you, when PMSing, <laughs> have been known to overnight gain five to seven pounds? <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh. Literally, you go to bed 164, you wake up 171. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. How many people have children, moms in the house? Happy Mother's Day to you. How many of you put on weight when you got pregnant? <laughs> Baby weight, sure. How many of you women can say those kids are now sophomores in college and you have not taken that baby weight off? <laughs> yeah, okay. How many of my seasoned sisters out there tonight, this ain't comedy, I'm gonna get to the comedy in a minute. <laughs> How many of my seasoned sisters out there tonight in the peri or the menopause stage? <laughs> No, I ain't asked y'all to raise y'all hand yet. <laughs> we know who you are because you're in here sweating. <laughs> I ain't mad, I'm with you. <laughs> How many of you in the peri and the menopause stage have noticed what used to be a muffin top <laughs> has turned into like a, like it's a bun, it's not even a bun cake, it's like a, it's like a pound cake, like a double, that's what it is, a pound, a double-decker pound cake, just solid and rebellious in the midsection, huh, yeah? <laughs> okay, so what you have said to me, let me summarize, as women, when we can have children, we gain weight. When we do have children, we gain weight. <laughs> when we can't have kids no more, we gain weight. <laughs> Seem like somebody made us to be big, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want y'all to think about it. <laughs> and then it would be, maybe, the plan of a very shrewd enemy, wouldn't it? <laughs> to get me to focus all of my emotional energy to try to be something that I was never really meant to be in the first place. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I guess what I'm saying is take some bun cake home with you, would you? <laughs> All right, that's my theory. <laughs> now, I, let's, be, let's address the elephant in the room, no pun intended. <laughs> I, can, I can talk about this theory and go around with this theory because I'm single, right? So me and God can deal with this theory as I eat onion rings. You may, if you're married, take this theory home to your husband and he may not like it. So I don't want him calling this station tomorrow talking about, is this Spirit 1053? <laughs> I sent Barbara down there and there's some lady comedian telling her to stay fat. <laughs> I didn't send my wife down there to learn how to be fat. Anyway, I didn't come here to tell y'all that. I just, that's my E-225 theory, okay? And I'm still working on it. I am single, and uh, when I talk about being single, people will interview me, and it's very weird because I'm not just single, I am content. And for some reason, thank you. <laughs> 
can make people a little uh, uncomfortable in the church, I learned it. I don't know why. One lady was interviewing me, and she said, never had children, Sherry? And so I was like, no, never had children. And then she asked me again, but she tilted her head and made her voice real breathy. So the first time, never had children, Sherry? And I was like, no, never had children. Never had children. So I was like, in the 15 seconds it took you to ask that again, no, I did not get impregnated. <laughs> I did youth ministry for over a decade, urban youth ministry. Thank you. And if I may tell you, that is a surprisingly wonderful uh, birth control method. <laughs> when I was done with that, I was like, oh, Lord, we're good. Thanks. <laughs> I'm good, Jesus. Thank you so much. But I did want to be a great aunt. My brother had two children, and I, was, I am going to be the quintessential aunt. I told my brother, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be the greatest village you have. I, you can, I am going to help with everything. And let me tell you, my brother took full advantage <laughs> of that. He would parachute them kids in. I wouldn't even know they was at my house. <laughs> They'd be standing out on the balcony with book bags. I'd be like, when y'all get here? <laughs> I told him I'm going to be involved, overly involved, because your kid's going to have to bury both of us. <laughs> so when the first one came, I said, okay, I can do this. I can do this. Her name's Janaya. Can you put that first picture up, please? Little Naya. Now, Naya, I love this little baby. This is my little first one. And I said, I'm going to be good at this. Now, I struggled because look at them eyes. She's a comedian like me. <laughs> and she had great material, even at this age. As a matter of fact, this was the eve of Thanksgiving, this picture. And my brother would say to me, stop laughing at the rebellious things she does. I'm trying to raise a productive human. I said, but she's so funny. And he's like, but I'm you are making her more rebellious because she's trying to make you laugh. I said, it's working. She's funny. <laughs> so I'm the aunt, right? Do we have any great, wonderful aunts in here? Yeah. It's our job to bring the cookies, right? <laughs> That's our job. So it was around 10 o'clock at night. She wanted a snack. I put some Cheerios in a little bag. I give it to her right here. And I gave her the bag, and she's eating, and we're laughing and talking. My brother comes down to the steps to spoil all the fun. <laughs> he said, hey, give that bag to Auntie. You got to go to bed. She took the bag and just kept eating. <laughs> so I was like, ugh. He said, I said, give that bag to Auntie. We're going upstairs. It's time to go to bed. Now, I know the comedy show's about to begin because she looked at me like this. <laughs> she took the bag, flipped it over, and dumped all the Cheerios out on the ground. So I was like, <gasps> So my brother said, pick those Cheerios up. Y'all know, y'all parents know how you talk through your teeth? <laughs> pick those Cheerios up right now. She took her little foot. <laughs> and before she did it, she did this to me. <laughs> oh, yes, this is happening. So I was like, no, because my brother is about 6'3", 245, 250. So not only is she a comedian, she's kind of gangster. <laughs> and she smashed the Cheerios in the ground. So my brother grabs her up and starts to take her up the steps. Now, as he is taking her to what is most assuredly her demise, <laughs> she lurches herself over his shoulder and says to me, good night, Auntie!
ranting with her, and I needed to, because there was another one coming. Can you put that next picture up, please? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Ain't no awe, she different. <laughs> this is a different one here, she different. I don't know. Did, has any of you had a baby that seems agitated that they're in your family? <laughs> Can you put the next picture up, please? No matter what picture we took of her, she always seemed... <laughs> Can you do the next one, please? It didn't matter what picture it was. <laughs> this one, she's not even asleep. We were talking and laughing. I happened to look in. She's like, I wish y'all would shut up. <laughs> I do. I wish y'all would shut up. They had the little, y'all know them little pictures at preschool when they put them in front of the big crayons and everything and they take the picture and then they send you a bunch of pictures and you cut it up and you send it to your family. Why my brother send us this? Can you put the next? <laughs> <laughs> this one we started calling her Shady Baby. So the comedian and Shady Baby would come to my house because my brother said, you said bring them any time. And they would stay for like 10 days a week during the summer stay, okay? Now, Shady Baby, I would say, put your shoes in the closet. Now, your mom, y'all mom's gonna think this is funny, but I don't have no kids. I don't think I should have to say that twice. <laughs> y'all so ignorant. Because I don't have to say, here's the cookies twice. <laughs> Put the shoes in the closet. So Shady Baby will kick her shoes off in the middle of the living room and go watch Paw Patrol, okay? I come up the steps. I see the shoes in the middle of the living room. I say, hey, Shady Baby, <laughs> come here. She comes over, she waddles because her head is too big for her body. <laughs> I said, listen, I told you, don't leave your shoes in the middle of the floor. Put the shoes in the closet. Shady Baby said to me, not shoes. Okay, so I don't have the interpretation for all of those tongues. But what I think she's saying is she's not gonna put the shoes <laughs> in the closet. So I said, hey, listen, I'm not playing with you. Put those shoes in the closet. Shady Baby said to me, my guy named na my guy na ma, na guy na auntie, na my guy named my mama, na shoes. Okay, so things are becoming clearer with the addition of my name. <laughs> it sounds as if she's saying, I'm watching Paw Patrol. If you want the shoes in the closet, auntie, you put them in there. So I got down on her little level so she can see I ain't playing. And right then is when I realized why I ain't got no kids. <laughs> Because, can you put that preschool picture back up? Let's just address it real quick. Look at it. That's my forehead. <laughs> Those are my eyes. Those are my hands. That's my nose. Those are my lips. I am arguing with myself. <laughs> Shady baby is me. This is why I didn't want no kids. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I got friends who say, hey, you know what? I, oh, my daughter's getting on my nerves. I don't know where she get that nasty attitude. I'd be like. <laughs> so I said, listen, put 
put those shoes in the closet. She said, I'm not getting in my mind. Now, Grammy, not shoes. All right, now, now I know what you're saying. You're saying, tell your mama to put the shoes in the closet. And I know that's what you're saying, because that's something I would say. So I snatched her up. And I know what some of y'all are saying, oh, Sherry, don't do that. Just ask her how she's feeling. I ain't asking no three-year-old how you feeling, of going all like this, doing all that. <laughs> I know how you feeling. You feeling like you want to get snatched up, and I'm going to help you. <laughs> so I got her in the air, little feet are dangling. <laughs> right then, the comedian walks in. In a seemingly unrelated event, Brant and I had gone to a music festival. I had bought some shoes from Target. They're the fake Converse shoes, y'all know what I mean? They look like Chucks, but they're not. They're fake and they're cheap. I bought them because we were gonna be outside, I knew they would get dirty, and I didn't want expensive shoes getting dirty. So I had fake Chucks on. Comedian comes in, she says to me, out of nowhere, uh, Auntie, get out of here with the fake. Chucks. <laughs> Shady baby, I got her in the air. She said, <laughs> I slowly lowered Shady baby down. She was right here face to face. Her little breath smelled like Capri Sun. <laughs> She said, not got my nice nah, shoes, not nah, fake shuck. <laughs> Think we know what she was saying. You so worried about my shoes, you need to be worried about them fake chucks. That's right, fake chucks. I put her down, they continued to laugh at me. <laughs> I got my phone, I hit speed dial three. My brother picked up, I said, come get your kids. <laughs> Your coupon has run out. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering, the comedian has grown up and she graduates. Can you put that picture up? And we taught Shady Baby how to smile. Can you put the next picture up? And as you can see, she still has my face, so. <laughs> So I want to tell you something. Can you put the next slide up, please? That is my beautiful mama. And that is my aunt, who we call Nana. And I have not told a lot of people this, and this is not something that we have made an official announcement for, but my next book is coming out in the fall. <laughs> Thank you. And it's about these two women. It's called Holy Ghost Mama. <laughs> And it is about those two women. Can you put the next slide up, please? That's it. It's called The 21 Old School Lessons That Changed My Life. <laughs> and I, they, my mom lives with me. My aunt comes and visits from time to time. And it really is like living with the Golden Girls. <laughs> one of my favorite things about them is, you know, as you get older, I'm sure no one in this room can relate, as you get older, you start forgetting things. I have called people, you know, you forget why you called somebody. I have forgotten who I called. Are you there yet? Anybody there yet? Where you? The phone is ringing and you're like, huh. And they're like, hello? And you're like, hello? This. They like, you called me. <laughs> Mom and Nana, they talk like 50 times a day. If they forget, they move on with another conversation. <laughs> Whatever. One time, my mom called my aunt and said, hey girl, did you have a chance to get that money off of, um, uh, uh, Oh, Lord Jesus, what is that child's name? Uh, uh, my Nana said, Dee Dee. Yeah, Dee Dee. Oh, I don't know why I almost said Peggy. 
My aunt said, Peggy, that's Jack Jack's daughter. My mom said, Jack Jack, yeah, girl, Jack Jack, I need to call him and see how he doing. My nana said, girl, Jack Jack dead. <laughs> My mom went into immediate intercession. Lord Jesus, no! <laughs> Father God, why did you take him? How did he die? <laughs> My nana said, he been dead two years. <laughs> we went to the funeral. <laughs> My mom said, and it was a beautiful ceremony. <laughs> they sent Jack-Jack off right. In the book, I talk about my mom and just her closeness with God and how she needed that to raise a child like me. <laughs> and one of the stories I talk about, true story. When I tell the story, people are like, no, that didn't happen. Yes, it did happen. This story is in the book. I was in sixth grade, so that makes me about 12. I was about 12. And I'm dating myself. I don't know if you guys could do this. You used to be able to go home for lunch. Yep, yeah. all right, leave school, go. Some of y'all millennials are like, why? Why would you do that? <laughs> what was at home? <laughs> food, we had food at home. <laughs> <laughs> Groceries, we had them at the house. So they were letting us out for lunch, I'm 12. And I said to my little group of friends, I'm taking everybody out to lunch. Why? Because that was the kind of kid I was. So we went to a restaurant called Eaton Park, and I took all my little friends to this restaurant. We had hot dogs and french fries and milkshakes, and we had a ball. Right then, while we're talking, laughing, finishing up food, the waitress comes, and she lays this really long white piece of paper. <laughs> in the middle of the table. It dawns on me, huh, that's a piece of paper my mom usually takes. <laughs> that's the first revelation. The second revelation is I have no money. <laughs> now as you sit there, you're saying, Sherry, why would you invite all of your friends to lunch when you have no money? That's the kind of kid I was. So I could feel that cry in my chest. Do you ever feel that cry where it's like a heaving, like a <laughs> <laughs> But I don't want to ruin the time of my friends. They're enjoying themselves. So I get up to go to the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom, and then the cry just comes out. And I'm like, I look up over the toilet and there's a window. <laughs> Don't worry, I wasn't too fat even then to get through that window. <laughs> I collect myself and I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I can't stay in the bathroom, so I go to leave out the bathroom. To this day, this restaurant is built the same way. You walk out of the bathroom door, and the door to the restaurant is right there. As I walk out, my mother's a very tall woman, and I've always been, well, this. <laughs> so I walk out, and I walk directly into someone, and I do a slow pan up, and it's my mama. And this is before cell phones, pagers, anything. She said to me, do you know how I know that you are here? And I was like, <laughs> no, ma'am. She said, the Holy Spirit told me you were here. Now go get your coat. Now talk about your mixed emotions, because I know she is going to pay, but I also know that I am going to pay. <laughs> And as I say in the book, I learned two things about God that day at 12 years old in sixth grade. Number one, I knew for a fact God is real. Second, God is a snitch. 
<laughs> Lastly, I always like to end in encouraging women to be themselves. Um, my family is a very church family, Pentecostal, charismatic, uh, preaching family. And so you can imagine what happened when this came. <laughs> they didn't know what to do. They still don't, actually. <laughs> They knew I had a gift for talking. They knew I had a gift uh, uh, for stage and all that, but they just didn't know what to do with someone who wasn't going to be a preacher. And <laughs> it actually made me very insecure. And I used to try to be a preacher because I wanted to be like them. I had no idea that God, at a young age, I had no idea God had this for me, <laughs> that he would make a way for me. <laughs> And I want to encourage you that as weird or as quirky as you may be, <laughs> that you may not fit the mold of what other quote unquote Christian women may be, God makes spaces for us. He made you, he knows how you are. There is room for you. And when I was young, true story, I wanted to preach so bad and I used to preach like my granddaddy, I used to practice practice his voice. He was a Baptist preacher. And I used to practice the voice. And I used to do it with old McDonald. <laughs> with a hairbrush and <laughs> in the mirror. <laughs> I would be like, old McDonald. Oh, and on that farm. Oh, come on, someone talk to me in here. He had a cow. E I E I. Oh, with a moo moo here. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me today. And a moo moo there. Here a moo. There a moo. Everywhere. A moo moo. <laughs> Old McDonald, don't get your offering in your hand, I'm closing. <laughs> Had a farm. E I. E I. Talk to your neighbor and say, oh. I can't believe y'all did that. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. I appreciate you. Thank you. Now I want to invite some of my friends out on stage and we are going to talk about some fun things and some, I know they're like, you expect us to follow old McDonald? <laughs> Erica is coming out and Sarah and Jen, come on out ladies. <laughs> One of these mine. One of these are mine. Thank you. Woo, that's hot. That was awesome. Thank you. Wow, that was Thank so fun. you. Wow. All right. Thanks for coming out. We wanted this to be a night where uh, Snacks and Good Company, <laughs> nobody liked that. And everybody's like, yay, Snacks and Good Company. When I first said that name, everybody was like, mm, that's so dumb. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a feeling, right? That feeling when you're with your friends and you don't have to have any walls up and you, you don't have to have any airs up. Uh, my, I'll just give a shout out. One of my best friends in the world, Verna, is here over there. Yeah. Verna just, yeah. I heard her laughing, yeah. And um, we, we, she moved to Houston and we drove her down there and then we were hanging out down there. And one of the most satisfying things that, um, that I've ever experienced was, you probably don't even remember it, Vern. I was talking to her 
And I was just kind of telling, I was like, one time, and I was telling the story, and she finished the story. And I was like, yep, girl. And then, and I went to tell another story, and she finished the story. And I was like, yep, sure did. And then, and then she finished the story. And, and then I realized, this person has been with me my whole adult life. And that feeling where you just finish each other's sentences, that's the mm -hmm. feeling um, that Snacks and Cook Company, that's what I wanted was just a friendship. Um, anyone you talk to talks about the epidemic of loneliness in our culture. Um, and I just think, wow, wouldn't it be wonderful in the church mm -hmm. if we had authentic community and fellowship, right? Yeah. All right, so our friends are here just to kind of talk about things that we go through and how we get through them. And so the first thing I thought would be interesting to talk about is how do you deal with comparison? Mm -hmm. Because, <laughs> I guess y'all go through that? I heard a, <laughs> I heard a collective, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Because it's, I, what I was saying to them when we were over there, I said, with every swipe of a reel or every yeah. swipe of whatever picture, it's telling you you're not enough. Mm -hmm. It's not saying it, but everyone is having a blast. They're, they're the best moms ever. I told yeah. somebody, I love social media, Sherry. <laughs> I wish I had her life. <laughs> she's amazing. She has no problems, <laughs> no issues. She's on the beach. She's in Seattle with her best friend. It's, just, it's great, right? And so it's hard not to compare your, does anybody deal with that? Like comparing yourself <laughs> in, yeah, okay. So, Jen, I'm gonna start with you. Yeah, I, I wrote a book on that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because it was an issue for me. And that's an awkward thing to say, right? Like you don't, say you know, I, it's me. Say the title uh, The, of the title book. is She's Not Your Enemy. Oh. Because what I felt was, you know, there's, there's envy there when it comes to comparison, but there's also just this sense of how am I doing in comparison to these other people? I'm doing really poorly because she's really talented. She's got, you know, the perfect life. She, on, at least on social media, she's got this, she's got that. And it just felt like I was at odds with all these women. And I realized so many things. I realized that I was living in this scarcity mindset of just, there's only so much to go around. So if she has it, I don't have it. Um, I realized that it wasn't so much about me versus her. It was so much more about something I need to work out with God. Uh, I just had so many insecurities, so many identity issues um, that I just, I, I was going around asking these questions of like, do I belong and am I important and am I loved? But I was asking the wrong people. I was asking other people instead of asking God. And uh, so that, that really changed it for me. How, um, like what did that change look like for you? Did you have to, t did you have to detox? from social media, oh, did gosh. you have to, like, yeah. what, did, what did that change look like for you? Yeah, I, I mean, it started more practically me and God. I needed to figure out who God was, because I always looked at God like some kind of disappointed boss. Like, uh, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta deal with her again. Oh, she messed up again. Okay, I'll give her one more chance. Like, hopefully she'll make it through this time. And that's not who God is. I had this completely wrong perspective of God. And um, I actually went through biblical counseling and I had this amazing counselor who kept saying, is that really who God is? Is he really impatient with you? Is he really, you know, trying to give you, okay, one more chance? No, that's not who God is. God is full of compassion for you. He loves you. He chose you. And so starting there and going back to the Bible and then working into um, his identity for me and it, it just changed everything. That's good. Yeah. Sarah, comparison. I was just sitting here soaking it all in. I had the pleasure of um, interviewing Jen on the Passion Meets Purpose podcast and uh, getting to hear more of her thoughts. So first of all, pick up that book. Secondly, listen to the episode that she is yeah. on. Um, I'm, of course, comparison. You know, it's hard. I'm raising a 17-year-old daughter, mm -hmm. and the thing that I have really tried to keep a close eye on I've heard with teenagers is like when they start to shut down or go in their room or you know I always have my eye on is her joy still there because for those of you that have gone this road before me like the hardest thing about um 
children growing into teenagers for me is the moment I see that, that, that imaginative play, that, that fully expressed joy. When I, if I start to see some of that dim because they feel like it's not being as well received, my heart breaks. Yeah. And so the comparison thing is kind of what I try to, I do my best to remind my kids, like, who I saw when you were three and who I still see now. Yeah. That's good. Is there joy still there? I, I, that, I struggle with that with Shady Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we all know Shady Baby now. <laughs> because she is 12 now. And I, I mean, y'all have been through it, but it's for me, first of all, it's very alarming to see someone who looks so much like you and you haven't given birth. So, and then she acts like me. And so I'm always apologizing to my brother. Like, I don't know what you did to God that you had to. <laughs> You had to grow up with me and then raise me. Gosh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry about that. But what I, I would like a little more on that, Sarah, of when you see, or all of, when you see like the change, I guess they do have to change, mm -hmm. but like it's kind of heartbreaking when the little, the baby part of it starts to go. And then it's like, oh, where's my, y'all know what I mean? Y'all like, suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Your moms and stuff, but I'm like, oh man. I, like, I, I like the way you put it, because that's what yeah. I'm always looking for, is, is your joy still there? Yeah. Is, it, is the joy evolving to something else? Is that yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, Jen talked about identity mm -hmm. and getting our identity first from God, right? So. For me to help my kids not do the comparison and find their joy, I have to not do the comparison. I have to know where my joy yeah. comes from. I have to know who I am as their mother yeah. so that I can remind them who they are. And yeah. the, the podcast that I host is called Passion Meets Purpose. Um, it's all about how God uniquely created each of us. You were just talking about this, quirks and all. Sometimes I think the quirks are the best part. Um, I also am a fan of lead with your limp. And so we talk about, uh, on the podcast, my first question is always, tell me about toddler you. Mm -hmm. What did your parents see in you? What do you remember? And it is, it is 98%, you will find that something they were like as a very small shady baby yeah. is who <laughs> they, is, is the giftings they are operating in mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And you can see the seed of it. And so... I try to do that with everybody I meet, actually, but especially with my kids, the reminding, we sang it today. Mm -hmm. uh, I am who you say I am. Yeah. And can may I ask you how old your kids are? Sure. Um, I've got a 17-year-old daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were looking at colleges. I'm just like, Aww. what has happened? I've been at the station for 21 years. Some of you that have been listening that long remember when I announced I was pregnant with Olivia. Oh, oh gosh. Wow. Um, my son just turned 12, mm -hmm. and the baby of our family, my tiny little newborn baby, Nora, is going to be eight in wow. August. Wow. Wow. Okay, and you're, how old are your children, Jen? I have a nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a one-and-a-half-year-old. So the toddler, <laughs> the toddler stage is very much active right now. Okay. And then, Erica, your children? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a 25-year-old daughter, Hannah, who turns 26 on your birthday, okay, Sherry, nice. May 28th. Happy early birthday, Sherry. All right, Sherry. write it down. <laughs> Pay homage. Okay. And my son is 22 years old. Okay. Yes. All right. And so you're a little bit on the other side of it. Yes. Okay. And I am still struggling. Okay. What a surprise. <laughs> um, I'm struggling with comparison as well. But I'm juggling my daughters, and I'm trying to find a way through it. I don't have an answer yet. My daughter really wants to meet that special someone. She's single and not content. Okay. And she is just ready to start her life in her head. And I keep telling her, honey, your life doesn't start when you meet the man you're going to share it with. Yeah. Your life is now. Jesus is working yeah. in you right now yeah. in the present. 
but she goes on the Instagrams, and all of her friends are so not showing the, the Instagrams. Ring. I know, I know, I know, but I like saying that. Okay. Um, but no, she's, you know, she's seeing all the sparkly rings and mm. all of the beautiful, yeah. I said yes to the dress. Yeah. And then their mamas, who I love, yeah. are posting all the pictures of the bridal showers and the baby yeah. showers, and my baby's heart's breaking. Yeah. yeah. And so I am in that struggle, and I am still, I'm like, Lord Jesus, this is me, 50% Erica. I don't get it. And the other 50%, Lord, I know that when this man walks into Hannah's life, we're all going to be like, whoa, we didn't know what was coming. But that's yeah. the tension that I'm living in right now. That's yeah. why I need the song, You Say, yeah. by Lauren Daigle every day. I need to be reminded that yeah. I am loved, my daughter is loved, yes. and that God has a plan. Yeah. So the struggle's still there for you. Every minute, right now. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right I get now. that. I get that. Mm -hmm. That's see. I love that. I love that the struggle was still there because then I'm, I'm sure some of you can relate, right? Yeah. I um I, I do have a question about social media. I have a text question here that I want to ask you. When you see me on my phone, it's because y'all texting questions and they texting it to me. Okay. So don't be like Sherry. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> They're sending me the questions, guys. <laughs> um. Uh. This is probably most uh, for you, Sarah, because I think it's your age range for your kids. Do you restrict their social media? I don't feel like I have the technical expertise to... Okay. <laughs> Guys, I don't even know what the new stuff is. Like, what, what's the new... It's not Be Real anymore. That's over. Chana, what is... What's, you don't know? No, nobody. Rebecca, our content coordinator in charge of all of our social media, what is it? Tell us. Okay, what? No, no, not TikTok. What about, no. <laughs> what about like their phones? Do you, do you? We talk more about like the thing behind the thing. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, um, I'm, it, I'm, it's funny that I'm sitting here with the microphone. I'm not the expert on this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry I put you on the spot. No, I'm you're, just you're okay. Yeah, yeah. You're okay. You're okay. Really? Um, I care more about the why. I care more yeah. about the emotions than yeah. the actual app that uh, it yeah, might that's be. Good. That's good. And so yeah. we try to just have more conversations about how are you feeling about yeah. this. I love that. Yeah. Because the apps will change. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right? So if I address the and why. They're, they're always yeah. going to be ahead of me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the one asking them. Today I, I asked Olivia, how do you remove yourself from a group chat? <laughs> <laughs> she goes, you hold it down. <laughs> And then you remove. I was like, okay. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> Did you say, let's talk about the why. <laughs> it, it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. I promise you. Somebody asked me, and I said, let me ask my teenager. So I just, I just let them roll. I just I ignore. I just let them roll. All right, that's good. All right, so some unsaid. I'll start uh, this time, Erica. I'll start with you, and then we'll go back this way. Uh, looking back at your journey of womanhood, motherhood, is there anything you would do differently if you could? Oh my! Um, I wouldn't have a harp at my wedding. I always think about that. I don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I had a harp at my wedding. <laughs> Sarah would take my harp. Sarah wants a harp. Erica uh, wants to dump the heart. Man. Okay. <laughs> what was okay. Wait, I, 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 wait, but what was wrong with the heart? That sounds. <laughs> is there, I, is there okay. Lovely? I was trying to go easy on my dad's budget. So I wanted like this big band. I wanted a DJ. I wanted 80s music. And my dad didn't have the money. So I'm like, oh, a harp is $75 an hour? <laughs> Sold. We'll go, with the, we'll go with the harp. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you. The harp was at the wedding. The reception, baby. The, rece the reception. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a hot flash here. Sis, was y'all doing the electric slide to the harp? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite understand what that was. 
You had to harp at the reception? What did you think that was going to do? <laughs> I was 19 years okay. old and in love. All right. On a serious oh, note, okay, lightning sorry. facts. Okay, um, right. I would not have let Joey Everett affect me the way he did. When I was in seventh grade, I was in love with a man named Joey Everett, and he was a boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he would talk to me. This is when we talked on the phone. Like, okay, and the phones were dumb. For three hours a night. Wow. And then at school, he didn't know who I was. <gasps> Ow. And then he asked Lauren Murphy oh, out instead of me. And for years, I thought that there was something wrong with me. No. Because he wouldn't look at me at school. No. And I wish, mm -hmm. golly, I wish I could go back and tell little 12-year-old E, no, God mm -hmm. made you beautiful just you the way you are. I feel no. that. I really do feel that. No. We all probably have a Joey. Come on. It, where yeah. it's just, it seems so small, but it took a piece of you. Mm -hmm. Right? It yep. just somehow, you don't talk about it, you don't bring yeah. it up. It seems a little silly when you say it, but it, it, it took a little piece of you, and you still kind of react or respond to it, right? Yeah. That's good. That's very good. Not a harp we'll talk about later. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, anything you would change in your journey of womanhood or motherhood? Do you have one right off the top of your head? I, I do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just wish I had been more adventurous with God. I think I have this very narrow perspective of this is what you do and this is how you do this is how you go about your life. These are the choices you make. And I just wish I had like gone on impulse a little bit more, like listened to the spirit and said, Okay, I'm gonna go after this prompt. It it feels Feels interesting, I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna go for it. Um, I wish I had done that more, I'm starting to learn how to do that. But. Did you feel fear or anxiety? Mm -hmm. Was it inward fear, anxiety? Was it fear of other people? Like, what were you feeling when it was like, yeah. eh, no? I mean, there, there was a lot of insecurity. Okay. I mean, I wrote a book on comparison, so there was always insecurity there. Um, but I, I fear and just a lot of, I think I know what God wants for me and it's probably not that. Um, just kind of talking myself out of it. Um, so, yeah, I think if I trusted God a little bit more and trusted, okay, maybe he's trying to point me in this direction. Maybe I should go for this. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. Yeah. Mine's sort of similar. Uh, Erica has a quote uh, by the computer in the studio that says, y it's your handwriting, and you wrote, what if it's wonderful? Mm. Ooh, I love yes. it. Yeah. Nice. And uh, as a person that usually jumps to worst case scenario for mm -hmm. any situation yeah. ever since I was a small child, and I think it's some weird defense mechanism, like if I imagine every possible yeah. situation, right. I'm gonna be prepared. And it's like, no, I'm just rehearsing yep. hypothetical situations that the Lord has not given me his grace to walk through. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would adopt what if it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot earlier, but the good news is I'm figuring it out now. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's, good. That's good. I think that is the good news for all of us, right, is that he works all things together for good. So he does. even if we made some mistakes or didn't take the jump or whatever, mm. he's still working in our story, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> this is, how do you balance being a good Christian girl, walking with God, and being feisty and a little spicy. <laughs> I think that was for you. When life is... <laughs> Tell us, Sherry. Who y'all write this to? <laughs> when life is testing you. If this is for me? Yeah. It doesn't say Sherry. <laughs> why why y'all assume when it says <laughs> feisty and spicy that that's me? Not a lot of spice no, energy nobody, over here. Nobody is. Uh, it's me. Okay. Go for it. Uh, how do you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will say that um, I had to learn that my personality is God given, mm, and yeah. that I don't have to apologize for being loud. No, come on. That I don't have to apologize for being just who I am. Yeah. However, the fruit of the Spirit is still the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And when the Holy Spirit is working in my life, that fruit is there. And so that's patience, that's love, that's kindness, that's joy, that's all of those things, right? And so what I don't get to do is say, this is just how I am, and so I'm going to tell you off, right? Mm -hmm. um, that is telling you off in my nature, sure is, 
but <laughs> it is. But when the Holy Spirit is changing me and conforming me into the image of Christ, that is something different. Yeah. I'm becoming a different person, yeah. but God doesn't change. He makes me more my personality. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. that that outgoingness, we talked about it. I was at the station today and one of the kids I was interviewing was very nervous. And so by the time we got done, he felt comfortable. Well, that's a part of the Holy Spirit using my personality to make him feel comfortable, right? Yeah. I'm outgoing and I can make you feel comfortable. Yeah. So you, I hope that helps, is that the Holy Spirit can shave away those parts that are not like Christ while still making me more me. Yeah, okay. that's beautiful. Yeah, I love it. All right. So we talk about delight, God delighting in us and us delighting in him. That sounds kind of Christianese, but I am learning to do it yeah. more. Yeah. And it, you, cause sometimes in church, is anybody not, was anybody not brought up in church? Can, okay. Okay, good. So sometimes you probably be looking around like, what are they talking about? <laughs> because sometimes there's like some kind of insider language. Yeah. That, and I only know that when I started bringing non-Christians to church. And they'd be like, what in the world does that mean? And I'd be like, oh, you don't know. Because sometimes, so delight in God can sound kind of Christianese, but it yeah. really is a wonderful thing. So I'm going to give it to you ladies and let you talk about delighting in God, what that means to you, and what, how that practically looks in your life. Because it is a beautiful thing. I'll start with okay. you, Jen. Yeah. Uh, well, when I think about delighting in God... And even God delighting in me, I think about um, my children. I just think about, like, there's, oh my gosh, my toddler. She is in love with going outside, with seeing birds and airplanes. She points the, every single one out. She's like, birdie, birdie. <laughs> and she loves the moon. Uh, inexplicably, she just, she's just, moon, moon. It's so cute, and I love it. And there's just very little that she can do that can make me not delight in her. I mean, there are times. <laughs> I'm sure Sherry knows and has shared the times. There are times. But for the most, I delight in her. I, she doesn't have to do anything for me. She just is. And it makes me so happy. And that's how it is with God. We, we just are. We're his. He created us. He loves us. He knows us better than anybody. And he delights in us. And so when I, when I think about how much I delight in my children, I think about how God delights in us too. Why? Well, I'm asking and I'm presuming, but I'll just presume and then you can tell me. Don't presume now. <laughs> Why is that hard to accept? Mm. You know Good what question. I mean? Yeah. Like that's hard to, it's hard to yeah. see that, that he just delights in us, that he yeah. has that heart that smiles yeah. when he looks at us. I mean, honestly, for me, there was a lot of legalism in my culture growing uh, up. Okay. And, uh, yeah. I, and, and a lot of it was me, people-pleasing, perfectionism. And so I, I developed this picture of God that he was not. And when I started going back to the Bible, it was a very different, different person that, I, that we were talking about. Um, so once I started getting to know God, it became easier to receive from him. But I, I think at first it was just very much like, oh, he's, he's disappointed in me. We're, we have this tense relationship. And when I, I, I didn't really know him, and when I started really getting to know him, that's, that's the difference that it... Were you, I'm sorry, were you raised in church I culture? was, you yeah, yeah, and, I, um, and I, I, that was a blessing in a lot of ways. Yeah. I, don't, I don't disparage that at all, but it was, you know, we were very focused on the Bible and on, which is great, um, but, you know, like, uh, it, to me, it came across as this is a lot of rules that I have to follow to make God happy, and if I don't do these things, like, God's not going to be happy with me. And that was wrong. I needed to have this whole perspective shift of this is who God actually is. Like one of the words that is used to describe God over, I think, 80 times in the Bible is the word compassion. Oh, wow. That's God. That's who he is. That's how he wants to be understood by us is in relation to us. And, and that, I mean, once I started understanding that, it was like, oh, okay, he wants to give me compassion. He is happy with me. He loves me. He chose me to be a part of his family and adopted me because he... It made him happy to adopt me into his family. That's Ephesians 1. Like, that's incredible. What an incredible thing. Oh, yeah. gosh, I love yeah. that. Is it, can anybody relate to that, being yeah. brought up in, in church okay. culture and loving it, but also having yeah. it give you a, a, a view of God that you need to maybe relearn yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. who he is? Yes, yeah. I, I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Hence the old McDonald. Uh, <laughs> Sarah, delighting in God. God delighting in you. Um, I'm a big proponent of you can't give what you don't have, right? And so 21 years of working in Christian radio, I had to learn real early on how in the world can I pour out on a very consistent daily basis the love of God, the delight of God in every single person listening um, if I don't know that I know that I know it. Yeah. Um, I'm very lucky to have a mom who, um, she just would, she'd walk around sometimes, God gets a kick out of me. He thinks I'm funny, you know, Aww. like what her quirks were. And I would, I would yes. watch that confidence, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I, I was like, that needs to be a t-shirt. Yeah. Right? <laughs> God gets a kick out of me. <laughs> I, I have, love, I I have a mom that believes that God gets a kick out of her. I love it. And that was so healthy for yeah. me growing up. Yeah, that's great. And so um, I think Jesus has an excellent sense of humor. Mm -hmm. um, I love humor. And so I try to laugh with Jesus about stuff that goes on. And I'm like, he gets my humor. He gets me. Like, I desire that level of a relationship with him and yeah. sometimes I'd watch my mom walk around and something would frustrate her and she'd be like, she'd go like this, she goes, ugh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. And so um, that was just modeled yeah, to me yeah. and um, I'm better for it. Oh my gosh. What a blessing. Uh, what a blessing. Erica. I, I have to tell myself all the time, God's not mad at you, Erica. Mm -hmm. And he loves you and delights in you. Yeah. You know, the Erica that got into a fight with her husband right before church. By the way, where's Ed's wife tonight? Ed wanted to know what the fight was about. Okay, okay, hey, hey, okay. Make sure you tell Ed, I'm not saying it out here. But uh, <laughs> I was ready, all right. <laughs> oh, money, right? Okay, yeah. it comes down to money. Um, and we're not going out for Mother's Day and Hannah's birthday. Okay, that, there it is, right? Right before church. <laughs> anyway, God loves that Erica, the one that did not yes. like to hear that. Yeah. And the Erica that after I took a deep breath, started worshiping the Lord with yeah. my church family. God loves both Erica's. Yeah. They're both in here, yep. right? And it's really hard for me sometimes. And I think that he speaks to each of us in our love language. And yes, I wanted to share does. a story about sprinkles, if you don't mind. I felt like God put this on my heart earlier. Uh, there was a time when I was out of radio for a year. Mm -hmm. And like Sarah can tell you, maybe Sherry can tell you, like radio is just one of my love languages. Mm -hmm. I love it so much. And I was in withdrawal. I would be at the microphone, I'd be at the grocery store, you know, the microphone where they say, you know, clean up aisle 10. I'd be like yearning to speak into it. <laughs> I missed radio. I was, I was wetting my pillow with tears at night. I had to change it, okay? Anyway, and God gave me a dream. I have always loved sprinkles my whole life. And in the dream, he handed me an ice cream cup, and at the bottom were all these rainbow sprinkles. And I said, Lord, in the dream, why are they on the bottom? And he goes, because I saved the best for last. And only Jesus can tell a girl, I love you through sprinkles, mm. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so I knew, like, that was one of the defining moments in my life. And every time I order ice cream, you know what I say to the poor person? Could you put the sprinkles on the bottom? Oh, and yeah. yeah, best for I them. love that. I'm going to get some ice cream just because of that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, ladies. I know we, we are supposed to wrap up, but there's a few more questions, and I want to make sure we get to them. Um, how do you implement godly structure in your homes? Mm. Oh. That's, Glad wow. I got That's that. a question. <laughs> Ain't nobody but me and my mama in my home, so. <laughs> wow. What the, <laughs> what's the next question she said? 
All right, y'all go ahead and think about that. <laughs> and the next one I would guess would be for those in the minute. The next one's for me. So y'all think about the structure. Okay. Y'all go ahead and think about that. Okay. How do you handle people who question your being single as a Christian woman, those wow. who think God made marriage for all of us? Okay. <laughs> So now I will plug Snacks and Good Company season yeah. two because we did talk about singleness. Mm -hmm. I will also say that um, I, as a single woman, stopped expecting anyone to affirm anything. I stopped expecting the church to think, I, I, I didn't need anything but God to affirm me. Yeah, I and I said to God, I'm gonna wrestle with you on this because yeah. it's hard, right? And when I get done wrestling, just like Jacob, I may limp, but I'm gonna be okay. Yeah. And, and I'm gonna hold, and not only am I gonna be okay, but I'm gonna be able to stand on that stage and I'm gonna be able to say I'm content. Yeah. And any girl that is going through it, and until she gets married, or maybe she never gets married, whatever the case may be, she's going to be able to see you in me mm -hmm. as, as a representation of joy. Because if we can't be that, I don't know what the difference is between us and the world. Yeah, come on. If Jesus isn't enough, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the difference is. Yeah. Is. I really don't. We, we've just put a marriage bow on it. But if you're telling me to be complete, I need someone else, mm -hmm. then you're not telling me anything different than what Hallmark told me. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> so if they got a church, I might as well go to that one. <laughs> you, see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I would say, find your contentment. Do you, if you're waiting for everybody to tell you that a girl or whatever, it's, uh, that's not, uh, uh, you, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. The theology mm. is not gonna change. Mm. It's, it's just not. I'm telling you that as your older sister, it's not gonna change. But God can come to you. And Paul said, who was single? Mm. That's right. He was. <laughs> Paul said, wherever I am, I'm content. Yeah. I've had this, I've had that, I haven't had that, I haven't had that, I am content. And then he said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens yeah. me. Come on, amen, amen. Okay, now y'all didn't get out of this structure. <laughs> I did all that to come back to y'all and ask y'all, how do you implement godly structure in your homes? I don't, I don't know what godly structure is. I, in the, and I, I mean that, I really don't know what like, it is. How what, I implement it in my life in the morning. Okay, like, yeah. So when I have a practice every single day, and sometimes I can't hot iron my hair because I want to make sure I read my streams in the desert. It is my favorite mm. devotional. If you've never heard of it, I just highly recommend What's it. called? Streams in the streams Desert. In you the have desert. the app, right? Did I hear you say that recently? Yeah. It, it is a book, it is old, and every time I open that devotional, it is like Jesus is beside me on my sofa, and he's yeah. talking to me, he Love. fills me with it. So I read that, it's just a couple paragraphs, and then I try to read one chapter in the Bible, Okay. and then I talk to Jesus while I put on my makeup, and on my commute to work. Okay. Every yeah. It's just him and I, I don't care how weird it is. Now I'm leaving the house at like 4.30 so I don't pass cars, it's not weird. Okay. But it is, it's just, that's my little structure yep. and I try very hard even if my hair suffers for it. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. So that's your, that's your own like personal yeah. structure that this is the time that God and I have. Okay, good. Sarah? Structure, eh. The, the Jesus part. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I would say that if you have a personal structure, yeah. I would think that that would translate so, to your home. So yeah. in my home, I want my kids to see a mom and a dad who uh, are going to give Jesus a yes if he's asking us to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've Come learned on. that I want to shorten the gap between when the Lord says something and I give him my yes. Come on. Oh, yeah. Okay. And recently was tested on it, and this is um, people with the slides. I've got two coming. I'll let you know when to put them up. Oh, okay. Uh, I was tested on it uh, 
last October when my 17 year old and those who I think show of hands how many of you have launched a kid stick mm. around toward the end give me all your advice <laughs> all right um, I'm in process of that and I'll tell you what I'm a good swaddler of babies you give me a baby I will swaddle that baby you give me chicks I want them in my nest <laughs> so to launch a kid well um, <laughs> This 17 year old came to me and she goes, what would you think of me going to Kenya? Oh. Say what now? <laughs> and um, it was a serve and learn trip with the school. And um, just when I was about to say, I don't know the chaperone, she hits me with, and you know Craig and Angie, they're going and they've known her since she was little. And, and she really felt called to do this. Mm -hmm. And, um, so Jesus and I talked about it, and I said what I had to say, and Jesus said what he had to say. And go ahead and put the slide. Aww. So that's my Olivia, and she got back a month ago. Wow, come on, Mama. And um, it's so weird to find my friends. You look on Find My Friends, your kid's in Kenya. <laughs> um, I'm so thankful that Jesus knows better than I do and that his Holy Spirit goes where I can't go. And so um, the godly structure that I'm working on in my house is not letting my own thoughts or fears or worries get in the way of mm -hmm. what he's calling them to do. Oh, yeah, come on. That's, That's great. Yeah. So that your girl gets to have the same yeah. example that your mom was to you. Yeah, come on. And that is just... Fun fact. Yeah. Their whole team got very sick there. Uh, oh, no. She had to go get an IV, and I'm on the phone and praying. I prayed, I, I prayed that whole week, and um, so I had some emotions, but I kept it together. I talked to her a couple times, and I was, I was like, you're good, this is, you're fine. Um, <laughs> she comes home, and the next day, my little one goes, mom cried a lot. <laughs> and I go, Nora! <laughs> and then Ethan goes, it's true. <laughs> so they ratted me out. Aww. It's always that youngest one, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> they will throw you under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. That is, that's wonderful. Uh, I, I think the greatest gift, I'm speaking from my own experience, from my Holy Ghost mama, the greatest gift here, a Mother's Day weekend coming up, mm -hmm. that a mom can give a child, it's what my mother g still gives me, is when you know my mom walks with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on. There is, there's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I said, when you were talking about your mom, it just reminded, no, my mom's not particularly funny. <laughs> but <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> she's, she's just a very straight shooter kind of anybody like that just kind of <laughs> but I know I always say God loves all of us but he likes her mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I say I say I say listen I don't know you know in the Bible you can tell when God's somebody's friend yeah. Mm. And I was like, I don't know if I'm God's friend or not, but I found one and I saddled myself up to her. <laughs> yeah. And I just hang out with his friend. Yeah. She is his friend. And I'm just like, God, remember, that's your friend and I'm sitting right next uh. to her. <laughs> so I just, I think for your daughter to know that, uh, yeah, that's an amazing structure that mm -hmm. you put there. All right. Well, yeah. I would say similar to that. I actually have a funny story. So last night we're eating dinner and my middle son says, um, he's seven. He goes, Mom, are you a nun? <laughs> First of all, <laughs> we're not Catholic, so we, we haven't talked about nuns. I, where did this come? I, I just said, no, why would you say that? 
And he, I mean, not, not that bad. <laughs> I was like, why, why do you ask that? You know, trying to be, trying to work it out. He said, because you worship God all the time. And that's what nuns do. And I was like, but no, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a couple pieces like going on that make me not a nun, but I really appreciate that. Uh, and I, I just was thinking about that as you're talking about mom passing on, because we, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say we have like a great structure, um, but we, I, I just try to model it. I just, I want them to know that I love God. Uh, we talk about God all the time. We sing songs. We talk about why it's important to go to church. Um, and that's something that my mom instilled in me. I saw her open her Bible. I saw her, um, it, my parents prioritized going to church. It was like, we're going to be there. You're not doing that soccer team because that has games on Sunday. We're going to church. And uh, so that's what I, I hope to, to pass on to my kids is this is important. This is, you are loved. This is, we need, we need to do this. Let's do it together. Yeah. yeah. Modeling it. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I, um, my mom... Um, we, we're charismatic and Pentecostal, so just go with it, if you will. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in, our, in our church tradition, you can have a prophecy about anything. You can have a prophecy about peanut butter. And so, <laughs> uh, when I was 12, there's a lady came to our church and she gave my mom a prophecy about me. And my mom went and got the cassette tape, so that'll tell you how long that was. <laughs> and she transcribed it. And then um, she folded it up and she put it in her top drawer of her, um, of her dresser. And then as I grew up and went way out, like you know how the prodigal son went off? I went p about 10 miles past him. <laughs> <laughs> he saw me and was like, Dag, she is wild. <laughs> 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 you see, <sing> Sherry? <laughs> but when I would come into the house, drunk, high, whatever, she never knew that I would go to her drawer and read that paper mm -hmm. and ask God, is this something that I could actually be? Wow. And uh, so I want to encourage you. I don't know if you have kids that maybe are kind of off the beaten path or, or maybe you got young kids and you're, you know, you're, you're building that structure, you're modeling it. Just be encouraged. Uh, it, it does, it does. God, God is faithful. Mm -hmm. He is, he really is. So um, I'm just asking, I'm gonna start with Erica and I'm just gonna ask you guys to kind of, you know, wrap it up to whatever God has on your heart. And, what you want to say to the ladies. Hopefully this has been a fun night for you all. <laughs> Just us, 300, 400 of our friends and snacks, <laughs> right? Erica? Thank you, Sherry. Um, it's just wonderful to see all of you, and we are so happy to see your faces. I was a little nervous. We had our front row here who promised me that they would cheer. Thank you, girls. You guys have been awesome. I, we, we just love you all. It's such a privilege to get to hang out with you every day on the radio and in person. And I just want to leave you with a Bible verse tonight. It's one of my absolute favorites. It's probably not one you hear all the time. It's Isaiah 49, 16. And it's a promise. It says, your name is written on God's hand. And I don't know about you, but I've written things on my hands before that I didn't want to forget about, that I wanted to remember. I want you to know that God sees you. He is the God who sees yeah. Your name is written on his hand, and you are loved. Mm -hmm. I echo Erica's sentiment. Thank you. It means the world to us that you came out. This is our first event. Um, and so uh, you guys are part of the inaugural crew. Thank you so much. Um, what I want to leave you with is um, along the lines of our identity, I was, uh, I was getting prayed over a couple years ago, and uh, one of the people um, looked at me and he goes, who are you? That was his, or do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? And I was like, oh crud, what's the right answer? And I'm like, I'm, you know, a daughter, a wife, a mother, um, I work at the radio station, like uh, the whole Rolodex in my head was like, what do I say? And he saw my spinning. 
And I think I fumbled out one of those things. And he goes, sweet girl, you are a daughter of the king and you have a seat at his table. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So if it's been a while, if I could go face by face, um, we prayed over every seat as they were being set up. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants you to know, daughter, mm -hmm. you are a daughter of the king. Everything he has is yours. Every mm -hmm. resource he has is yours. You have an abundance just at your disposal. Yeah. And you have a seat at his banquet table and his banner over you mm -hmm. is love. No. I don't need it. I'm good. <laughs> I've got them. <laughs> uh, I don't know if there'll be some kind of weird interference, but I, I just wanted to say I've been thinking a lot lately about receiving God's goodness, and we, we just kind of talked about it a little while ago, but I know for me, again, insecurity can be an issue, and I keep thinking, oh, maybe that wasn't for me, God. Oh, maybe that promise is meant for her, but not for me, and uh, I just want to encourage you to not second guess God's goodness. Receive it with open hands. Um, don't let it fall to the floor. I, I love the concept of open hands, especially while I'm praying, because I can catch what God wants for me, and I can let go of the things that I don't need. Um, but trust God. Uh, receive his goodness, and he loves you, and he wants to be with you. Ladies, our friends, Erica, Sarah, Jen, give them a hand. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. What a wonderful night. You know, when we started talking about having this event, my only stipulation was that it wouldn't be weepy. I don't like weepy women's events. Now, maybe you do. <laughs> it's not that there's anything wrong with it. If you like a nice weepy women's event, more power to you. I just, I'm not that person. I like to leave laughing and joyful and feeling full of encouragement. That's the kind of event I like. And so if I'm going to be a part of an event, that's the kind of event I want to have. And it was that and so much more. So thank you so much to every woman. If you're listening and you were there, thank you to every woman that was in attendance. Thank you to the wonderful staff from Krista who put this together so wonderfully. It looked effortless, but I know that it was not. So thank you to everyone. If I start saying names, I'll miss somebody. So I don't want to start saying names, but thank you to the staff from Krista uh, who put this together and thank you to all of you for listening to this episode i hope you could feel how much fun it is i know sometimes you listen and you may not be able to get the same energy that you would feel if you were there but hopefully you felt a little bit of it and hopefully we'll do it again and hopefully you'll be there until next time i'm sherry lynn on snacks and good company, snacks and good company.